Email 31, I had a question coming out of section 9.4, number 37, and here we were asked to find the sum of an arithmetic series, or a sum of an arithmetic sequence. So if I want to take the sum of an arithmetic sequence, all right, whoops, I don't need it after that. That's like basically saying I have an arithmetic series. That's what a sum is. It's when you add the terms of a sequence. So anytime I hear the word arithmetic, I, I know good things to make sure I know about. Um, a sub one is always a good thing to know. And then D is always a good thing to know. Now, I, I don't necessarily have to find that for this problem. I just like mentioning it that when I have arithmetic sequences or series, I like A1 and D. And when I have geometric sequences or series, I like A1 and R. And if I look at this, another thing that I'm going to take note of is they're asking us to find the first 11 terms. And I know it's 11 because that upper index there is 11. Now, when it comes to arithmetic series, you actually have two formulas. You can see one of them right here. You also have this other one that S sub n is n over 2 times 2a1 plus n minus 1 times d. And so, oops. That should not have moved, but there we go. Um, so you can use either of these formulas. It just depends on what is easier for you to find. And, and what I mean by that is if you look at these formulas in terms of what they have in common, right? They both have an a sub 1 in them, okay? They both have an n in them. You can see n here, right, and n here and here. The, the big difference between the two is what they have next. So what I mean by that is in this term, they have a sub n. Whereas in this formula, let me, I'll go to, I don't know, yellow. In this formula, they have D. So just depending on what you know, you can kind of help decide which of the two formulas you want to use. And I opted to use this one, and I'll show you why in a little bit. But I, I don't want you to think you couldn't have used this one. You totally could have used this one. And keep in mind, you can also use the arithmetic sequence formula. You have this at your disposal also. So if you ever wanted to find a particular n value, whoa, what was that? Um, you could do that as well. Let me undo that because that is weird. There we go. Okay, now let me get back to the formula we're going to use here. So I'm going to, well, you know what, I'll leave that one there, but let me get back to this. Okay, so in this case, I opted to use this formula. And if I wanted to find, uh, if I want to use this formula, I need a sub 1 and a sub n. And since my n for this particular problem is 11, I technically need a sub 1 and a sub 11. So I, I just went and found them, right? Because this is a sub n right here. So the first thing I did was I plugged in, and let me color code this so we can see it, right? Or actually, JK, I, I should technically say this was S sub K, but it, it doesn't matter um, which subscript you're using. So if I, let me go ahead and um, rewrite this though with an A sub K just to be consistent. Ooh, that was the eraser. There we go, A sub K. So technically here, if K is one, I'm gonna plug in a K equaling one there. And that's what you see in this arithmetic. One half minus one half is zero. So I'm finding out A sub one is equal to zero. Right? And that's just a good number to have in my, in my um, tool belt. Now I also went and I found A sub 11. Right? So now I'm gonna put an 11 in this place and you see me putting an 11 there. And when I crunch that number, I get that A sub 11 is five. So rolling into this formula, I know a sub one is zero and a sub 11 is five. And so I'm gonna plug those in, all right? And then I plug in my n value of 11. You see me plugging in zero and five, and then I crunch this number and it comes out to 55 halves. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I almost, I almost held on to that sneeze till before the video was done. All right, so at the end of this, we get S of 11 equaling 55 halves. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.